My dear and the beloved in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of Saint Michael the Archangel. We have to ask ourselves, how do we know angels exist? We know it from the Bible, the teaching of the Catholic Church, and from the universal belief of the faithful. What is an angel, and what does the word angel mean? An angel is a pure spirit without a body. He has intelligence and free will and was created by God in order to glorify and serve him. The word angel means messenger, one of the many functions of the angels. Angels are more perfect than human beings because they have superior intellect and will, can exercise greater power over nature. The angels were destined for supernatural happiness with God in heaven, but first had to pass a test in order to prove their love and obedience. The trial of the angels consisted in humbling their intelligence before the intelligence of God and in submitting their will to his. Did all the angels come triumphant from their trial? No. Lucifer, one of the greatest of the angels, refused to obey God, and a great multitude followed him in his revolt. Were the rebel angels numerous? Let's suppose that a third of their number followed Lucifer or Satan, according to this passage of the Apocalypse. And his, in other words, the dragon's tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Satan and the bad angels were guilty of pride and disobedience because they refused to humble themselves and obey God. As a result of their sins, their minds were darkened. Their wills were confirmed in evil. They were shut out of heaven forever and condemned to everlasting punishment in hell. Can the evil spirits ever leave hell? Until the day of judgment, God permits evil spirits to go about in the air or on the earth, although they carry their punishment with them. My dear and beloved in Christ, why did Satan and the demons commit the first sin? Because they didn't want to honor God. Because they didn't want to serve God anymore. During an exorcism, a demon named Torture stated, I used to be a pretty angel, but I left with the others. I asked him, why did you leave? Because we did not want to serve God. And listen to him. We were tired of serving and listening to everything he had to say. We decided to revolt and we were cast out. And then he made this inexplainable sound showing his great regret and pain. Sometimes we wish that we had not left but we can't go back. I said, but God loved you before you left, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did. Stop asking me these questions. They hurt me. It hurts me to think about. It hurts me to think about not being in, and he couldn't say heaven, but we know that's where he hurts me about to think about not being in heaven. I don't want to go back to hell, Radecki. Do the bad angels know there were going to be consequences for disobeying God? Satan lied to them. Satan told them that they would have their own kingdom and they could do whatever they wanted and he wouldn't ask them to serve him. But he did. Satan also lies to us. When he tempts us to disobey God's laws, do whatever we want, and ignore the consequences. Satan tempts us to sin, to disobey God's laws by repeating the words of his disciple Aleister Crowley. Do what thou wilt. Do your own thing. Lead a self-centered, materialistic life. Live free with no thought of the consequences. 
My dearly beloved in Christ, demons study our weaknesses and relentlessly tempt us, especially when we're depressed or fatigued. What is it that the demon can really offer to people? Damnation. They can tempt people to have whatever they want, but the evil spirits will take their souls in the end. My dear and beloved in Christ, can the devils exercise power over nature? Since they retain their natural strength of intelligence and will, they can exercise great power over nature, yet only so far as God permits. How is this power manifested? By extraordinary prodigies, by false miracles, by false prophecies, by false apparitions, etc. As attested by Holy Scripture and by the history of all times. These marvelous effects produced by the devils are nevertheless easily distinguished from the works of God. The demons use this power to lead souls astray, to oppose the Catholic Church, and to make sinners instruments in spreading deceit, error, and diabolical disorientation. Evil spirits are full of hatred toward everybody, especially God, because he's all good and infinitely perfect. Since demons hate Almighty God and envy humans, they constantly work to harm us and drag us to hell. They use temptation, obsession, and possession. Satan is filled with hatred. He works constantly to destroy marriages, homes, families, and belief in God. Love and humility are two things that hate, Satan hates. The devil uses hatred to divide people, friendships, marriages, families, and churches. Hatred is powerful when it's used against others. My dear and beloved in Christ, Satan is the ruler of this world. To him, the corruption is wonderful. Most people are corrupt. However, we can conquer the evil spirits by the grace of God and through vigilance, prayer, and self-denial. Since Our Lady crushes Satan's head, we must frequently pray to her. According to St. Bridget, the demons are ever anxious in their pursuit of souls, yet they quickly abandon their prey merely at the name of Mary. St. Francis said, as wax disappears before the fire and as dust is scattered by the wind, so the entire army of evil spirits flee away at the simple invocation of the name of Mary. My dear the beloved in Christ, Satan's goal is to bring as many people to hell as possible. Why does God permit the demons to tempt us? God permits them to tempt us in order to sanctify the just who are strengthened and purified thereby. When we pray and run from the temptation, our merits increase and the devil is tormented and confused. On the other hand, by consenting to temptation, the wicked becomes, become slaves to the devil in this life and in the next. My dear and beloved in Christ, Almighty God has given us several devotions and supernatural aids to help us through these spiritual dangers that we face today. These include True devotion to Mary, according to St. Louis de Montfort. Devotion to Our Lady of Good Success. Devotion to St. Philomena. And devotion to St. Michael. During an exorcism, an evil spirit told me, St. Michael listens to that woman with the beads. Okay, that's Our Lady of the Rosary. St. Michael listens to the woman with the beads and helps her a lot. He does everything that she says. He's obedient, and I don't like him. None of us demons do. We hate him 
because he was obedient and didn't leave with us. He's courageous. I ask, why is obedience so important? The demon answered, because he, the Son of God, was obedient to his Father. And why should we be obedient to his will? To gain salvation. How important is obedience to God? It's very important. Very important. Obedience is one of the most important things. Above all the angels, demons hate St. Michael the most because he's a courageous soldier endowed with superhuman excellence and virtue who always fights against them. When I showed a possessed person at the picture of St. Michael, he growled and then formed his hands into claws. Especially when people are in their deathbeds, he fights for their souls so that the evil spirits do not approach to harm them. St. Augustine said that St. Michael, although prince of the heavenly court, is the most zealous in honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary and causing her to be honored and is always anxiously awaiting the honor of going at her bidding to render services to some one of her servants. On October 13, 1884, Pope Leo XIII had a vision concerning the future of the Catholic Church. After the pontiff had finished his Mass at the Vatican, he suddenly stopped at the foot of the altar. He stood there for about ten minutes, as if in a trance, his face ashen white. When asked what had happened, the Pope explained that he was, as he was about to leave the foot of the altar, he suddenly heard two voices in front of the tabernacle. He heard a confrontation between Jesus and Satan. Satan boasted that if he had enough time and enough power, he could destroy the church. Jesus asked him, how much time and how much power? Satan replied that we need a century and greater influence over men who would give themselves to him. Jesus said, so be it. Pope Leo XIII was then permitted to see a horrible vision of the attacks that would be waged by evil spirits against souls in the church, as well as the consoling vision of the archangel Michael thrusting Satan and his legions back down into the abyss of hell. Going immediately from the chapel to his office, the Pope composed a prayer to St. Michael with an instruction that it be recited after Mass by priests throughout the world. We may suppose that God permits this momentous, decisive spiritual battle for several reasons. First, as a punishment for sin. Second, to test to the utmost the spiritual powers of the church. And third, that Almighty God may be glorified by His triumph and final victory. In closing, since so many demons have been unleashed from hell to attack her, the church is facing its greatest crisis. Therefore, devotion to St. Michael is more important than ever before. If we pray to him often, he will help us to resist temptation, and persevere in the faith. St. Michael is the conqueror of the rebel angels and the highest angel in heaven. He's the fortress of the church militant, defending it from the attacks of the evil spirits. St. Michael is called the bulwark of orthodox believers. He also consoles souls in purgatory and brings them to heaven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.